What's good, y'all? Welcome to my review for this week's episode of Sword Art Online, Alicization, War of the Underworld. Man, that's a lot. <laughs> but yeah, man, this episode, once again, was fucking fire. No, Suku getting raped by tentacles this time, so that instantly makes us better than last week. <laughs> um, not as much Asuna. Don't know how I feel about that, so I won't have to, I really only have enough to work with for like one Asuna sim post on my Twitter. <laughs> But, uh, yeah. <laughs> but if y'all follow me, y'all know I was going crazy last week with the Austin post. <sighs> oh, man, I swear. I swear, man. I am a borderline Austin simp at this point. Um, anyway. Also, if you guys hear anything on the mic or anything, anything else besides my voice, like wind or whatever, got some fans running, it's bloody hot. Um... Yeah, really not much more to say. We had a, a fantastic art animation, although I gotta ask this one question right here and now. Any, like, light novel readers or whoever was watching this did... Because at the end of the episode, yeah, I'm gonna talk about the ending right now. Bierkali said something along the lines of, like, you'll take care of our daughter or whatever. And they went to that ship with the purple hair, the one that Kirito faced off against that has, like, a thing with, like, reflections or whatever. So, is that actually Bierkali and the administrator's daughter? Like, or were they talking about Alice? Because, you know, he also mentioned, Beerkel also mentioned that he sees Alice as like a daughter, so... I'm a little lost on that one. If any of y'all can clarify what the hell he was talking about, I appreciate it down in the comments below. But yeah, our animation was on another level here, man. Especially during that five... <laughs> that animation, though. A1, man, they don't fuck around, man. They don't fuck around when it comes to that sale. Anyway, enough of me rambling. Let's just jump right into this episode. So we start this episode where we left the last with Aegis with, uh, yeah, with, uh, <laughs> with the Klein and the rest of the guys coming in there. We see Aegis also show up, Liz and Silica, and of course also Super Heavy see Liz and Silica, which I still can't believe how Recky Massive make actually get Liz over with that episode in the first half of House of War of Wonder Woman. That shit's still crazy. Like, I still can't feel like, who knows? Maybe in like the last arc, which is like legit. SAO's actually legit ending, guys. Like in the light novel, like, the arc, the light, the. Uh, uh, the arc the light novels are in right now, that's the final arc. Apparently this was going to be the final arc, but Reki was was convinced to make one more. Which, not going to lie, I'm kind of sad to know that we are this close to the finish line of this show. It's going to be it's gonna be hitting, man. It's going to be hitting when we actually get there on the anime, because y'all really don't read the light novels. <laughs> Maybe one day I'll read them, but not today. Anyway. So... Yeah, maybe he'll actually get Liz over, or not Liz, Silica over, because I don't like her either. I didn't like Liz, and I, could, and I couldn't stand Silica. I now actually kind of like Liz, and I still don't like Silica. So who knows? <laughs> maybe he'll change my mind about Silica too. Or maybe not. We'll have to wait and see. Anyway. <laughs> so, anyway. So, they go in there, they're all also super happy to see her friends there. And she, of course, she's got tears in her eyes, the whole nine yards. And she's like, oh, even though you guys might not be bad, you've converted your precious accounts, blah, 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 blah. You know. And, 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 and Silica's like, come on, not Silica, Liz is like, come on, girl, we survived this to hell with ALO. Nothing can touch us. You know. <laughs> she also said like that. And then also ask her what, um, how they get in here, how they get inside the game, how they get their accounts converted. And they're like, bitch, who you think it was? <laughs> Obviously, she did not say that. <laughs> but it, but they said, you know, who you think it was? It was you, yeah. After that heartfelt speech she gave out about the uh, Alice, about Alice, the Wonder Woman, which I, which in my reaction, I was like, what the hell is she talking about? Uh, was it off screen? But then, as I thought back, I think it was that, I think it was in that same episode when they were talking about when Yui was going off about Alice around like the midpoint of that episode. I think it was. I'm not sure, but I think that's what they meant. I think that was what they referred to. Because at first I thought, well, what the hell are you talking about? But anyway, so then, so then, uh, Redley comes in there, he introduces himself, and they're like, oh, thank God. So not, and they're like, oh, so you're also in the real world. I thought they all would have been scared like the soldiers. Of course, the guys are fighting. Um, Liz tells him that, nah, we're all, not all of us are bad. Some of us cool. Yada, yada, yada. And so then also starts to, you know, giving them order that they don't want to, maybe it's more attrition. She tells Liz and Silica to fall back with them like 200. And, they also, and we also found out that uh, Liz was able to convert about, was able to convince about 2,000 players to join them on this, to join them in this battle. So, you know, that's actually quite impressive she got that much. I, I, I like, she just said it so casually, oh yeah, just 2,000. I'm like, that's a decent size number, woman. Come on now. <laughs> but, um, it also says, you know, that's more than enough. 
Anyway, so she tells him to retreat with about 200 and focus mainly on support. She, and then and she says that she's going to attack the front lines, which got me hype, as you guys could tell. Um, and then, uh, but also Renly asks Liz and also asks, uh, or Austin asks Renly to treat, to teach, uh, uh Silica and, um, uh, Liz, the how to use like the secret arts and everything, because you know, the short men from here don't know how to use them, so you know, he's gonna teach him. He's like, Yeah, you got it. And so Austin gets her sword, she pulls out, we get this nice, amazing shot of, of Austin with her sword out. Mata sexy, Mata <laughs> Uh, you, we actually came, also came in there, I guess, restored her health because you know, the blood was gone, like the screams were gone as well. Not gonna lie, I kind of miss having the blood on her face, that was low key kind of sexy, <laughs> but uh, whatever. <laughs> I swear to God, the woman, the power this woman has over me is fucking this. I swear, man. I swear. I don't know what it is about Austin, but when does, she, but man, does she be hit? <laughs> I don't know, man. Anyway, <laughs> enough of me rambling on about Austin. Now. So, so she goes in there, she charges in there, and yo, know, then they start playing Swordlands. Yes, yeah, Swordlands, which you, you know that got me hot, cause y'all know how good that track is. <laughs> From the OST, so I'm getting hot. I'm getting excited. I'm just like, we're like, all right, let's go. Now Austin didn't actually get that much in action this part. Most of it was her just charging, and the rest of it was just a bunch of no guys. And I think members of Yuki's crew, because I remember, because we saw this green dude with the spear do a six one nine, <laughs> and we saw this also like this orange dude, this dude that looked just like Kirito. I swear to God, it looked like Kirito just with a different hair color. And we also had that blue, the the blue hair mage. That I believe was part of Yuki's crew, so we actually got to solve some of Yuki's guys as well, which is nice to see, because you know we I don't think we've seen anything relating to Yuki or her crew since the Mother Rosario arc. So that was a nice little touch there from Rekka that we actually saw them again. That was cool for the two seconds it lasted, but you know it was cool for you guys that really dug that arc. I liked that arc really. I thought that arc was great as well. Anyway, so so she so the dude comes in there to the six one nine. She just slices up a couple guys, and then we see her smile, and then we kind of like she has like this song with like just her smile, which. Man, I love her smile, man. I'm probably gonna meme that too. Y'all probably get two Austin posts from this episode for me. One about that main show where you saw her by when she pulled out her sword. And the one I suppose probably could do with that giga thing, like, I will protect this smile. I will probably do that. So like I still, like I said in the video, follow me on Twitter. <laughs> follow my Twitter. I cannot plug my Twitter enough. Follow me on Twitter. It's some good shit there, ladies and gentlemen. It's some good, good quality ass content. So, so they charge in there. We get like this one, this one like uh, st this one, uh, just regular uh, still of just like awesome. The rest of the guys just charging and going, going forward. And then we go back and with, uh, then I was like, you know, and I was like kind of high because I was hoping we see more Asuna going in there with sword lance playing back. But then we have her back to the real world to the uh, to the turtle fort with uh, with the rest of the guys and. This is kind of where, and we kind of see where their plans of attack are and where they're going to be going and how they're going to try and take down uh, Gabriel and his dudes. So once we get there, Higa is kind of like kicking, at, kicking himself because he got cut for how careless he was, you know, not figuring out he had two unprotected god accounts for the, the Dark Territory! How do you forget something like that? No, apparently in the light novels it was a little bit better, but still, bro, come on! Come the fuck on, man. Come the fuck on. <laughs> but anyway, so Rinko uh, hands him a water bottle, and she says, you know, we got there in time. You know. And then so I say he starts kicking himself, like, how can I be so careless? Yada, yada, yada. And he says, and then uh, Rinko goes on and says, like, you know, even though there's no other way, this, um, you know, bringing in these players, it somehow, uh, if someone makes some of uh, Project Alization public, and he says, you know, compared to her, you know, getting, being captured and being used for un, you know, for like, uh, for like UM, what was it, like UAVs, I think he said, uh, this is better, yeah. And that, and they realize that you know she's just not like a passive AI for like unmanned weapons or any or anymore or whatever. Now she's like a second brand of humanity or whatever, created in a complete, 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 com created in a computer, which you've already known that didn't you? I'm paraphrasing. So then they start kind of wondering on what to do next. And well, first off, uh, uh, he he got actually notices like he actually knows that there has been some a uh, brain activity or whatever with Kitty Tone. Because you guys know how in like a uh, heart rate monitor you have the BT, BT, you know the thing where it goes up and down. There's two of those for Kitty Tone, and they were both around the time when Kitty, when Alice, not Alice, with uh, Asuna and Sion both came in, uh, both got in. Which I assume is when Kirito actually started to show some 
life or whatever. <laughs> Some movement in those couple times when, like, you know, he met Austin, which... Fuck, that was hidden, man. That was her. That was hidden, man. Especially when I rewatched re it uh, in the dub. Which also, the dub when uh, Liz got over, man. Man, they'll say that. Her English voice actress did a fantastic job. I don't think I mentioned that before, but she was great. Anyway, so they go in there. Now they're kind of wondering on what to do next, on what, why that could be. They're thinking, like, you know, and the first thing they think, as like, oh, is it because that they were close with me? He's like, no. No way it could be, no way his brain could be, no way the brain, blah, blah, blah. The damage he has sustained in his brain can be fixed with something that poetic. No, that, that, that's a dumb. And it's just something must be, you know, something must be hitting it, or something must be affecting it, or whatever. Or causing it, excuse me. And so then they're kind of wondering, like, yo, could it be that, you know, that, that, that there's, like, maybe a copy of him or something? But, like, no, we never copied his fluff light, and that would be impossible to do. And from here is when the, and then he just kind of just starts going off, mumbling to himself, like, fucking Izuku, <laughs> like my boy Izuku. And so while he's going on there, Rinka's trying to get his attention. He's just going on and on. Like, I won't lie, this is when the episode started to lose because, you know, this is, like, way above my pay grade or whatever. <laughs> and, and he keeps going on about these two things, the subject and the object, I believe, with the words he said. And so after a while, he eventually gets Rinko's, uh, Rinka, uh, Rinko gets his attention. And she tells him that the subject and the object are, like, philosophical, philosophical metaphors or whatever for... Or concept, excuse me, uh, for expressing relationships, the others who exist in you, and the one and the you that exists in other. Kind of what Sion said a while ago about how the character that lives inside her is, you know, like, see, don't you feel that's the character that lives inside me? You know, the arrogant or whatever. Also, when she, when we, so when she first met up with Kirito, I'm assuming that's what they're referring to. Like I said, I'm not. This is, this shit is way above my pay grade, man. <laughs> this, this all this philosophical fucking mumbo-jumbo soul shit. <laughs> but anyway, they go on to how it's all pretty much kind of low-key connected to a brainwave. And that that, in a way, created like a backup self-image. So whatever inside the flux lights, I assume, of Alice and Asuna, or not Alice, well, I guess maybe Alice, but Austin and Sion, they could maybe use what, they, what their self-image of Kirito is, and maybe use that to bring him back. I'm assuming that's what they're really. I'm assuming that's where they're going at it. Like I said, this shit is like just goes right over my head. <laughs> but and so then, once he gets, once he finds out, he's like, "That's it! I've come up with a new recipe." <laughs> I'm sorry, I had to do Ignis. I love that. That meme was hilarious, man. Back when they were Father's Fifteen came out, when he was like, "That's it! I've come up with a new recipe." <laughs> so anyway, he has, he's like, "That's it. We got it. We have it." We have the day that when we can have we have the day we can use to restore Kirito shattered subject, but that requires the main computers that Gabriel and his crew is occupying at the moment. So once again, they're fucked. But like, but like right before that, he's going on like, okay, we got it. We just need to, we need like two of the two or three people copy the copy the self images of him that they have in their fuck life for Kirito. But we're gonna need the main control, and that he also asked them like, you know. Are those two girls that came uh, earlier, are they connected to Kirito? And they say, yeah, of course, so yeah, Sion with the death cut stuff. And then they say Sugu is his little sister. Um, last time I checked, she's his cousin. So did Retki retcon that in one of the light novels I'm un unaware of? Or did or did Kirito just not tell him? Like, bro, because last time I checked, she's your cousin. You thought I forgot about that, didn't you, Retki? <laughs> anyway... <laughs> But regardless, from there they kind of go on plan what their plan is, and that uh, high geek. And now that there's hope that they can actually get there, even though they need to make control, is that high is gonna go crawling through like the like to crawl through like the cable dock or whatever to go and search in there to gain to like the main control room to like get to, like the main conductor to folk to work with Kirito's flux light from inside there. Now of course they're asking like, oh, how are you gonna get in? What if you get caught? You're gonna get attacked from below. And so they're gonna say it's an Ichimon to go in there and kind of be as a decoy and a distraction for them. But, and then, um, uh, um, uh, Rin Rinko mentions, he's like, oh, but he can only barely, he can only slowly do it. And they're like, I feel bad for him, but he's gonna have to go too. But he's gonna have to do his best he can. And they also go for, uh, Nemo, I think, is the other robot they got. I forgot there, I forgot the other one's name. But they say that without balance, he's practically useless. So, 
And so, so they're going to use the robot as a decoy to get in there. And then Heige is going to be going through the ducks to get to the main conductor to, of course, work with Kiryu's Fluck Light because if because they can't wait on it until like after until they get out of there because there might be a battle and then the power gets shoved and then Kiryu from that point if he forcibly gets locked out while he's unconscious, the man's fucked. He can't go back and through. He can't even. He won't be able to get past like the uh, uh, in, uh, initiation initiations or initialization or whatever. Uh, so he can't get through the opening and he pretty much can't use a damn. He pretty much can't use the thing ever ever uh, again. So they got. So this is the way. So they have to do it now while Austin and the others are still connected into the underworld, or diving into the underworld. Excuse me. And so, so that's their plan, and that's how they're going to do that. And yeah. So, and then after. So anyway, after that, they got their plan all set up and mobile. I'm curious to see how that's actually going to work. Oh, and then one other thing before I do, we jump right into like the ending of the episode with that god tier fight. We actually had another guy, well, I guess a security guy that actually been working down in the in the cable docks that knows how it works, actually come in there and say, like, um, I'll go with you, sir. And because he says, as I, as too, I am scrawny too, because he says that, you know, he can pretty much go there because he's very scrawny, and he'll be able to fit through it a lot easier and more quickly. So that's why he's going, he says, I'm scrawny too, and I've actually been working with this thing to maintain the cables, you know, for most of this time. And then he just says, yeah. To be honest, I didn't even really remember where the main conductor was. And I'm like, bro, let me get this straight. And he says, of course, thank you for coming and all that shit. So I'm like, bro, wait, let me get straight. If this man did not come in here and offer his services to you, because he also said he'll take a bullet, he could probably take a bullet for at least take a bullet from him, for him. In other words, being his bullet sponge. <laughs> but he says that, like, you're telling me that if he didn't offer services, you would have pretty much just been, you pretty much would have just been guessing your way through it? Bro! Like, come on now! Really? But anyway, so the dude says, so the dude, so the dude offers all he says yes. Uh, I believe his name was Aya? I think his name was, I don't really remember. But then we get back to Gabriel and Bierkoli, where we get a god tier fight with a slightly different animation style. Like the anim, like the way the anim, this episode, this last part of the episode looked, was a bit different. Not like they completely changed the art style, but like the line work was a lot darker than it usually is. I think I think that's what it was because it definitely looked different. I think it was just like the line work, or whatever, was just the lines were just a lot darker and thicker than they usually are. And I think that's what it was. I might be wrong on that. I'm not an animation guy, but let's talk about this god tier fight. So, first, but first of all, I gotta say this right now. I actually, li I really dug the new art style, whatever they did. It looked very much like Witch Studios, almost. I don't know if they animated this section or what, but it looked awesome. I like the different art style it had. Uh, but anyway, so they're first start slashing each other. So they're first slashing each other, swords, whatever. It looks like uh, Gabriel gets the upper hand. He's like, I am tired of this. Your soul is so thick and this, that. He's like... He's like, hey, and Bill he's like, hey, 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 man, come on now, I still got plenty of time, I still got time to enjoy it. So he starts like running around, kind of tracking the blood, uh, looking at down the blood uh, trail from when he got his arm chopped off. <laughs> so he's like looking, so he's like tracking where the, where the tracks lead and where they went from, but he also is like dodging, he also did that purple mist shit. He hits some ones when he gets back up and he's just kind of like looking around, he's like, was it here? No, it wasn't over here. And he looks over, and then we see this, uh, this, like, like shadow or whatever of the past of when, uh, Gabriel cut off his arm. And so then Gabriel appears, like, right next to the guy, being like, You're planning something, aren't you? And then shrokens his ass all the way up into the fucking stratosphere before he comes crashing back down to reality. So when he gets back up, he's like, look, he's like, still letting the shark in the blood see where it goes. And he finds, and he gets back home. Actually, no, by this point, no, 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 he's actually on the ground. He sees, like, oh, Gabriel's coming right after to finish the job off. I got my thing to see. But then he sees, like, this thing in the sky. You see it in his eye. He's like, hey, now, didn't I tell you to stay down? And then in comes his dragon, and the man just, just, like, butt, like, takes Gabriel hole in his mouth and just starts burning the motherfucker and I mean burning him He's like driving flyer everything but give him to get out Um the airplane gets back up he says yours you know you, the moment you gave me will not go I will not will not will not be in vain or whatever the hell he said it was too I wasn't paying attention to the dialogue because it was so fucking epic So he fires up this huge attack 
right where Gabriel matches his gas up right when he hits it. And he's like, and we found out that the time spirit sword cuts through time. And what he did was that little like shadow or whatever of what happened before with him with his, with Gabriel, uh, what happened before him with uh, Gabriel cutting his arm off was actually he sliced through his past self, which means cut back to the present, he's dead. And he like, and, and actually right when the timer, I mean, uh, right when the time thing kind of came up, and when it was like kind of like the time was going back into where it is now. Uh, we see, um, we see that purple hair chip, what was her name? Uh, Fantio? Fantio for like a quick, for like a split second before it goes back to the time, and it sets it to a normal, and Gabriel like, explodes. And by that, and then we get like this little flash, and then we see Gabriel, not Gabriel. Uh, we see Bear Queen with, um, with out in like this like little like flower, me sunflower meadow or whatever. So he's just chilling, he has Alex on his lap. And he kind of just like, has his hand on his on her forehead. And Alice kind of wakes up, and she's like, oh, you know, so warm, whatever. But then she wakes up in reality, and there we see Pierre Cruz. Dead, he's like standing, he's like sitting up, smiles, and that man just looks like a badass. That man went out like a fucking legend. I might call this my people with a title this episode is. Pierre Cooley is a fucking legend. Or maybe not fucking legend, but Pierre Cooley is a legend or something. I don't know yet. I'll figure something out when I actually make the thumbnail. I might actually just make it that one shot Gabriel at the end of the episode because, oh boy, <laughs> I don't know. We'll find out when we get there, ladies and gentlemen. So, anyway, so of course, Alice is like, no! And then, Bjerkali is like, you know, hey, now this one, don't start, don't cry, you know my time was coming, blah, 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 you know, all that shit. But then, afterwards, and he also calls her his, his daughter, like, you are my only apprentice, and you are my, and you are my only daughter, and, you know, which I thought that, of course. Nice little, like, that was like a moment. But then the administrator shows up. Now, at first, I thought the woman was still alive, because we didn't know she, like, was dead or not from when we last saw her. But no, we find out that she's indeed dead, and this is just, like, her memories inside the, inside the Hercules' soul. Of uh, the administrator, which, okay, I gotta ask, did, like, her and the administrator have a little, like, him and the administrator have a little fling going on? Like, like novel readers, if any of y'all are watching this video, please tell me what the hell is going on between Bierkely and the administrator. I'm kind of lost here, man. So, anyway, she kind of, like, drives off on the man's, on the man's dragon. And, you know, isn't she like, oh, don't you resent me for what I did to you? And she's like, eh, I got too old to care, and, you know, it was made for a hell of an interesting life. I meant that, you know, she smiled and everything. She has a nice little smile, now I'm gonna give her that. But then, uh, as she's like, as he's like fading into nothing, he says, uh, "Fantio, I'm, it looks like we're not gonna now, we're, we're not gonna see each other again." And then we see Fantio, she's like sitting like on her knees or whatever, praying or whatever. And then we see kind of like this like golden like mist or whatever, kind of circling around. And then you see, and then you say, and then you hear him say, "Take care of our child," or something along the lines. Now, at first, I thought it was something. Now, I actually went back and rewatched this section of the episode when I recorded this part of the review, just to make sure I didn't just to, like re to see if I missed anything because I was like lost my first watch this. But then I was like, but then after she hears that, she holds her stomach, obviously meaning that she is pregnant with Bierkeli's child. So I actually had to rewatch, and I was like, oh, okay, she's pregnant with his kid. Okay, now I get it. <laughs> so yeah. So yeah, that was actually kind of interesting. She's like, of course, you know, she'll be she'll be a gladiator like you was this time and third. So that was kind of interesting. So her and so Bianca was getting down with uh, Fazio over there. Okay, okay, all right, all right, bro. <laughs> I'm surprised the man still gets some at his age, but hey, man, good on you, player. <laughs> Holla. <laughs> anyway, so yeah, that's gonna be interesting. So if the woman's pregnant in a battlefield, I care where that's gonna go, what she's gonna do for the rest of the season. So that's basically where she goes with, with you know, her being pregnant. Right? Will she reveal it to Will there? Will she reveal it to Austin and the others? We'll have to wait and see. We'll see what happens with that. So anyway, after that, we then after Gabriel explodes and everything, we head back into we head back to Gabriel because he wakes up. He, he realized that his brother was like, oh yeah, he died too. But he went down with his with his regular when he poured his uh, his regular cap. And then Gabriel writes something on like his notepad and hands it to. Um, Four eyes, whatever the dude's name is. And it tells him, you know, import this, uh, and, like, you know, convert this account to the underworld. And he leaves, and he's like, oh! Uh -huh. And he smiles. And then we see the co the the name on it. I don't know what the hell it says. I can't read curses to save my fucking life. I'll probably have my, man, my mom look at it and see if she can just decrypt it for me. <laughs> uh, and, but, yeah. 
And then we see this shot of Gabriel coming down the stairs, and it ends with this one shot of him with like this smile on his face. The animation sounds like completely different. His eyes are like cat eyes now, and it looks kind of creepy, and I might use it as a thumbnail. It might just be, that one shot might just be the thumbnail. I'm not sure yet. I got, I got a couple ideas what I want, but yeah. So yeah, man, that is all I gotta say on that week, on this week's episode of Sword Art Online House Edition War of the Underworld. Fantastic episode, like always. Great animation. I'm curious if we're gonna go Gabriel, we're gonna see him with Fantio, is she gonna like announce her pregnancy or anything? That should all be the where that's gonna go. And yeah, man, overall, I'm gonna give this episode a 10 out of 10 leave Jones. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you liked it, subscribe if you're new. Follow me on Instagram and Twitter for this description box below. And it's always come back for more. Like that stuff. You work any, you work any, you work any.